Anne Chow. She is the proud owner and founder of the Sane School right here in Marco. I feel like you're not supposed to be in here. I'm like, I, I got scared right now. You still out. look very young by the way. Thank time. you. <laughs> <laughs> like, teens, sometimes they completely overlook that I'm there. They didn't even realize that I was there. You know, when you have a child, it's like, yeah. you don't even want to spend that, like, you know, 20 bucks on your meal, but you'll pay $300 for a play kitchen, you know? <laughs> it's it's like, true. For fake food it's for true. the kid. But for us, like, going from, you know, humble beginnings to suddenly threefold, and then the pandemic, there's a straight out lockdown. So to continue my quest of interviewing different local businesses in Markham, today I'm here at the singing school right here in Markham, interviewing the proud owner and the founder of the singing school, which I know for a number of years. Let's get started. Hi everyone, today I'm super excited to be sitting down with Anne Chow. She is the proud owner and founder of the singing school right here in Markham. And today we'll be asking her some questions, having an interview. Uh, for her to talk about her business, talking about the singing school and the vision behind it. Thank you so much, Nigel, for inviting me. It's so exciting to have this opportunity to talk uh, about the school and to share what we do here. So, and I remember like when you first started your musical journey, you were more focused on the classical side of things. Later on, you started to explore different type of music, and maybe you can talk about your musical journey, like how did you find that passion? Mm -hmm. And then why do you want to share this with other people? For me, it's always come from a place of passion. Right. right? I wanted to become a better singer, so I did a lot of research. Okay. I took a lot of classes. I went to the States. I went to Montreal. Wow. I went to a lot of different places and took different workshops. That's above you know, my technical training at the University of Toronto, where I studied music and vocal education. Right. And so I actually started teaching in a high school. I started oh. teaching off in a high school, and I realized like there are a couple of times where I went into the staff room, and I, I looked so young at that time <laughs> that teachers would call you me out. You still look very young by the time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like teachers would call me out, be like, "Hey, you're not supposed to be in here." I'm like, I, I got scared, right? I'm like, "Oh, I'm not supposed. To, oh, I am actually. I'm a teacher." And, and they would be very apologetic about it, and we'd laugh it off. But it was at that moment I realized that's true because there are times where. I'm in my music classroom. Some of the kids will walk in right. and they're just hanging out there and it's nice. I like that. I like that sense of community, that open space, you know. Right. But sometimes they completely overlook that I'm there. They didn't even realize that I was there. <laughs> and until someone turned around and say, oh, miss, you're here. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. So I think for me, it was like a moment of, oh, maybe I am still young. I still have a lot to learn, a lot of places to go and a lot to grow from. Right. And so at that point, I'm like, okay, I want to do something for me. Right. Because I love to teach. I love sharing what I know. Right. But it's a very like giving kind of position. And I want to first amass enough knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to be full. I want to be whole. And I want to be in the place where I can give more in the future as well. So then I you know, stepped away from teaching in the York Region District School Board. Okay. And I started competing. I started competing in singing. Also started to travel. So I actually spent a good year in Taiwan. So wow. I would be there for three months, come back for a bit, and then go back there for three months and come back. I got to meet a lot of songwriters, a lot of artists. It was really cool seeing their life. And it also solidified for me that that's not the lifestyle that I wanted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a hard life. And they're doing so great, and they're so resilient. Yeah. But I learned a lot from them. Okay. And I got some gigs there, too. So that was really fun. And coming back here, having won some competitions and having met different types of people in different walks of life, yeah. I felt comfortable with sharing then what I knew. Yeah. And so that's how I started teaching. That's how I started teaching um, Oswin and Ozaya. We right. got connected. Yes. Um, I, can, I think you guys found me through some competitions. Yeah. Um, and then I was really happy to share. At that moment, it was, for me, it wasn't like I thought it was going to be a career. It was, this is what I just love to do. Like, it didn't feel like work. And to invite people into my home, it felt like you guys were family, and you're still family to yes. me now. Yes, yes, yeah. That's how it all started. I started teaching in my basement, uh, sharing what I knew. I recorded the kids. I yeah. uh, wrote music with them. Yes, that's right. Of course, right. right, I shared yeah. with them, you know, different types of techniques. A lot of kids nowadays aren't that interested in classical music, right? So I have to find a way to to get them exposed to it, but at the same time, teach them what they're interested in. So there's also pop technique that I learned throughout the years right, as I yeah. was traveling yeah. um, and, and joining competitions. So I got to teach uh, a merger of the two, which was yeah. really, really fun for me to find different ways to experiment with different strategies to get kids to be receptive. 
Right. Um, and to make it fun. Yes, right? for sure. Uh, yeah, because it's hard. When you think about warm-ups and technical exercises, no one wants to sit there on the piano and play drills. It's the same thing with singing. No one wants to stand there and, and, and just do the vocal warm-ups. They right. want to work on the music. And not only that, they want to sing, okay, I'm done with the song, they want to sing something else. So it was really great for me to kind of, it's a challenge for me to right. take my passion and figure out how I can pass that passion on so that they will do the drills and then they will practice the songs and so forth. And so that was really exciting. And then as I taught more, mm -hmm. I realized I just, I just loved it so much. Uh, so I started to look into what else I could do. Okay. So, um, and of course, there was a, more of a demand and it got to a point where there was always people ringing the doorbell and yeah. my family got so annoyed with me because <laughs> it would be every half hour, every hour, ding dong. It's like, they, oh gosh, like no one can watch a show. We were one no of one. those people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then it, like the waiting area too, like where are they going to wait? Okay. And then so right. my parents were always, do I go down or do I not? Yeah. So it was like, okay, I'm sorry, mom, dad, you know what? I'm going to do something about this. So then it became, okay, uh, let's rent other people's spaces and see mm -hmm. if, you know, how it's going to pan out. Right. And that was exciting. We yeah. got to do a new branding. We got yeah. to, you know, bring people there. And, um, and it worked out so well that I started doing group classes, too, because right. we had limited space before. So was it uh, the singing school back then? It was still under the umbrella of, you know, my own. Okay. Like, okay. I didn't hire teachers or anything like that. It I was see. like a very personal project. I just right. really wanted to see what I can do, explore what I can and create. So we, we rented someone else's space. At the time, it was Music City. Right. And they were so, so nice. They were really kind people. They just let me use the space whenever I needed. And that gave me the confidence to, you know, do tackle bigger projects. Right. So we started doing group classes, summer camps. Yeah. We had a songwriting summer camp where the kids actually came together yes. and then they yeah. wrote the music and it was really, really fun for them because a lot of them didn't understand what goes on behind the scenes when you're writing a song. Right. They don't know that from, you know, when they just say the words or listen, think about a melody and how you hear it on Spotify, they don't know the process. Right. So we were able to show them the process and they took part in it actually. So including the musical arrangement yeah, part and stuff like we that. Yeah, everything. We showed them how to yeah, make a beat. Uh, we showed them the instruments. And that was really exciting and empowering for them, letting yeah. them know that they're a lot closer to being on the radio or like being on Spotify and, or awesome. being on YouTube. So I think empowerment is, is a huge part of what we do as well. So yeah, we, we were able to do things like that. And when there was a bigger, bigger need and I realized I couldn't teach, I had to turn people away. Right. I couldn't teach everyone by myself. Right. And I was also limited to the types of projects that I did because you can't put on a full production musical with one person. Yeah. Um, so finally, we uh, decided we were going to write up a business plan. I wrote nice. it up overnight, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do this. And I actually consulted a couple of people, some nice. mentors, business mentors, and they looked at it. They're like, oh, this is great. You should go for it. And I'm like, should I? I don't know. Should I? Um, and then I'm like, you know, I'm going to go for it. Yeah, and, and so that's how we were able to open the school. It was yeah. because there was a need, and I also needed a space where right. we could grow into it. Yes. Right? We grew out of what we had. Um, and so the grand opening was so much fun. We had a lot of our kids come in. They, they came in to perform. We had these giant balloons. And most importantly, we had Don Hamilton. We had Billy Peng. We had Joe Lee. We had Bob Soroya. And a lot of uh, media uh, from Fairchild as well as from A1. They nice. came. And it was just so nice to see how, you know, my life story of joining all the competitions and meeting right. all these people exactly. up until then yeah. and how they came here to support yeah. not just me but the stream the stream that now belongs to a bigger community it's yeah. not just me in my basement now now there's a lot more people that can get involved yeah so that was super duper cool so like to me i think i i know a lot of singing teachers as well mm -hmm. you are definitely technically a very strong singer like with all the competitions and you go to different places to try to expand your mu musical career and explore right if i ask you like do you still have that passion to perform like do you still have that urge you know that that um you know how do you call it that rush you know you want to get on stage and perform like how does it compare to your passion to teach you know i feel like if you're a musician you always want to perform right Right. If, if there's an opportunity and the music, it, it's inspiring to me. Yeah. Uh, and I get to perform to an audience that also loves music. I yeah. would love to perform yeah. for sure. I wouldn't be able to compare it against teaching just because 
teaching is just such a it's a it's every part of my life it doesn't start and end when my work starts and end even before i teach or after i teach i'm always planning ahead like how do i do my lesson plans like what kind of projects am i going to do how, what kind of collaborations would be interesting to the kids what would inspire them and so when it's something is so all consuming it's sometimes hard to think about okay going out there and performing because right. it's not about me now everything that i'm doing is about the kids and so that's the main difference i find and it's kind of like parenting isn't it <laughs> like the moment that's you true. have a child it's like yeah. you don't even want to spend that like you know 20 bucks on your meal but you'll pay $300 for a play kitchen, you know, <laughs> it's like true. for fake food it's for the kid. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of like that. charged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the singing school is my baby. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how I feel. So the singing school mm -hmm. is such a simple name. Yes. How did you come up with that? I wanted something super succinct, simple. I want people to, who don't know much about singing to be able to go on Google and be like, I just want to learn to sing. Mm -hmm. Is there a singing school nearby? I want them to find me, find the school and come and hopefully if they like the community join us the idea is this is no frills no f you know fluffs we don't want to be a music school we don't want to be a music academy where right. you're learning all these instruments and that for me is like it's great those kinds of school exist for a reason because there is a need right. as well yeah, but I, sure. I want to service people that come in because they decided one day that they really want to improve on their singing. They want to see what they can do. Yeah. They want to improve maybe their confidence as well. It could right. maybe be other reasons outside of singing and they feel like this is something that can help them with it. So I want to be able to position myself so that it's so focused that people, when they come, they know what to expect and they get what they want, what they're looking for. Nice. Yeah. When, when did you start this, uh, this school in this location? Yeah, so we started in 2019. Wow. Yeah, that was our grand opening in this location. Yeah. Um, and it's been a very interesting five years, I have to say. Yeah, we're celebrating our fifth year anniversary in 2024. So can you speak to the growth of this, um, of this school, like how many teachers mm -hmm. you have now, like yeah. how many people you have on staff, how many students have come through and stuff like that? You know what? The growth has been tremendous, both internally and also the school. Right. Um, just by visually, like the number of kids that come in. And you know, and I keep saying kids, but adults learn here as well. Yeah. I don't want to deter anyone. Yeah. But kids is my specialty. And then I have yeah. other teachers that focus with adults. Yeah. And that's why I keep saying kids. Yeah, so the moment we opened here at the singing school in 2019, our population, our student population grew by uh, three folds. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's great. Exactly. It, within the first year. Right. And it was such an incredible rush right. to the point where I had to learn a lot about running a business. Right. Before it was like, you know, just like, hey, you want to come for lessons? That's great. <laughs> like, so I had a little book. It was, oh, you want to 10 class packages? Okay, this is your A4 paper that, you know, it's in my right. binder. Just sign it off. Yeah. That was super easy. But now I need to hire an admin. Yeah. And then I had to keep track of who's coming, who's like, if they're sick, like what's going on, yeah. and then payroll for yeah. other teachers. And it was fine if it was just like 10 more kids. But oh my gosh, it was like, we're talking like 80 more kids than I was used to handling and 80 more parents. And you know, there's a lot, you know, when, when you're dealing with parents, everyone, you know, communicates differently. Right. Someone wants to use WeChat, someone wants to use WhatsApp, someone wants to use email, someone just wants to call and only yeah. between this time and that time. Yeah. So it was really interesting to learn all of that. So, uh, but yeah, the first year was a lot of growth for us as a school. Um, and then the dreaded pandemic hit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So that was when there was a lockdown. I don't know if you remember the lockdown. Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> was, was it 2020 that there 2020. was a lockdown? Yeah, yeah, 2020. It was actually about one or two weeks right after our first musical production. And okay. at that time, I remember we were shifting into high gear. We were getting ready for a musical. We um, had all the costumes. We were making all the sets. The kids were so excited to perform. And then we started hearing about this strange flu that was mm -hmm. you know, coming to Canada. And we're like, oh, what do we do? So out of just necessity of just the pressure of the parents, we actually canceled two weeks of rehearsals just leading up to the show. Mm -hmm. And then we had an option at that time, okay, do we want to continue with the show uh, or do we want to postpone it? And I'm okay. so glad we decided to continue. Yeah. Because, because if we post, 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 it would have canceled, happened. right? It would have never yeah. happened. And the kids worked so hard. And so on that day of the show, um, you know, I think there was only a couple of people who wore masks. And yeah. But before that, because it, it, it wasn't officially full-blown yet. Yeah. Um, so it was a great show. We ended off with a bang. And then we had the lockdown. Right. 
And I don't know about, you know, businesses that have been around for longer and, you know, they have like, you know, everything, you know, figured out. But for us, like going from, you know, humble beginnings to suddenly threefold and then the pandemic, there's a straight out lockdown. Right. That was a lot of challenging like times. Like that was those really interesting times. <laughs> Actually, that's a good lead in to my next question. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you started in 2019, yeah. uh, so you are going to hit five years very soon. Throughout those five years, like what are the, the most challenging times and then like how did you recover and how did mm -hmm. you overcome it? Because we had just opened, we were in a phase of growth. We yes. were in a phase of just explore what we can do. Right. And that in a sense is a good thing. Right. Uh, because we were ready to pivot. We were ready yes. to make changes and accommodate. You're not set in your ways already. Exactly. Right? Okay, so we yeah. were interested to know. What options do you have? Right? Yeah. In terms of like how you can pivot and do other things. Yeah. And we found that we just try to meet what our clientele wanted from us. Um, a lot of students that prefer that one-on-one -on -one in person, and I completely understand. With yeah. singing, you want to have that collaboration. You want yeah. to feel the resonance in the room. Yeah. You want to be close to the teacher and in person. So I understand that. But then there's also students at that point where you know the parents were tired at home. Right. They wanted to find program for their kids. They wanted to learn their kids to have uh, music lessons, but maybe didn't want to invest in, say, a guitar or a piano or like a, something physical because they don't right. want their kids want to take lessons um, for a long time. Yeah. So we found it was really interesting where there's a shift between students that come here because they really want to join competitions. They want to be a really good singer. They might even want to go to university for, right. for music to now we have people that maybe they're interested and maybe they're not. Mm -hmm. And, and most of them are there for social reason. Yeah. And so we completely had to change the clientele that we were servicing. So one of the things we tried to address right away were, was the toll on mental health for our youth. Right. And I think that was a huge debate um, when it, it was the school board the, you know, figuring out if they should postpone or they should continue the schooling and the pandemic and all right. that. And so we found that they, the kids lacked social interaction. Mm -hmm. And so we created a free for all and kids can invite all their friends and we're not going to take down in their information or anything. It's not for business. It's purely because we want to create uh, an opportunity for the kids to socialize okay. virtually in a safe space where there's adults watching and right. making sure that everything's fine. And everyone has to turn on their camera so there's no like, oh, like right. strange people in the, you know, and yeah. it, they only can join if they're invited. So what we did was we did a karaoke sesh oh, every nice. single week. Nice. Um, so they come on and if they know the song, they will sing along. If they don't know, then they'll learn a new song. And they get to sometimes just, I saw some kids are doing their homework, but then they're like kind of watching. And then Listening, when they get, you know, exactly. Yeah. And then when, when they get to a song that they know and they like, we're up and we're dancing. Like I'm sweating, like leading those <laughs> sessions. I'm like, yeah. And I'm saying, oh yeah. And I'm like holding my imaginary mic. And then the kids are following along. Yeah. And there's students, that I, people that I've never seen, like they're, they're, they invite their friends and I've never seen that child before. But then they start coming week after week. Right. And it's not necessarily that, they, you know, they're going to start learning singing from me. That's not the the purpose of this the yeah. purpose of this is that they can connect to each other yes yeah for right? sure and that's the power that you have as a school and i never had that power before when i was doing it by myself and that for me solidified that hey i may not be making money right now i might be like crying internally why did i do this <laughs> why did i open the school but there's also a sense of peace knowing yeah. that hey i can make a difference during this difficult time yeah. for other people so that that was incredible and yeah so the kids would be in the chat room they would be like typing to each other oh can we sing this song oh can we sing that song and, and then you know when time's up i'm like oh sorry guys until next time and i'm like no please one more i'm like you know what? i'm gonna write down all your song choices just write them out now and you have a long list of songs that i don't even have to come up with songs and i end up learning a lot of new songs too really right. cool music so that was really, really fun. That's awesome. Yeah. So actually, that also leads into my next question. Yeah. What's your proudest moment like throughout your teaching career? Um, mm -hmm. Any notable stories that you yeah. would like to share with us? Gosh, um, I find that the moments where I smile to myself are always the ones that you don't expect. Like when an older student comes back, you know, mm. I have a student that 
um, graduated last year and she, she is in Harvard now. Harvard has a joint program with Berkeley School of Music and okay, she's right. in that program. She's very, very talented. Nice. And like, she, you know, they, just before they left, they, you know, she didn't make two food and we just caught up on all the, you know, the times we shared together and the, right. and the competitions and the shows that we did together. And, that was so, so sweet. It was little moments like that. I'm like, oh, I'm so proud of them. And in, in a sense, I realized, hey, I am doing the right thing. Okay. And it's a little reassurances like that. Um, I have students that have um, gotten professional theater gigs. Nice. So the Mervish Theater, they had a production mm -hmm. of Joseph and the um, Technicolor Dreamcoat. Dreamcoat, yeah. And one of my students was cast and she was amazing. She was like there every single day. She didn't, she couldn't go to school for three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she is still in uh, high school. Uh, no, she's not in high school. She's in elementary school. That's crazy. Yeah. So she in professional theater, and she was only, I think, 12 years old. And so when she invited me to come watch her, that was also a spectacular moment. That's really cool. Yeah, I just had a student that was in, um, she's Car in Cardinal Carter mm -hmm. uh, Academy of the Arts, and she got Sandy in Greece. Uh, so proud of her, just seeing them on stage and just doing what they do best. Those, those moments are, are fantastic. From the business end of things, um, Last year, we did get nominated, and we were able to get the Business Excellence Award nice. from Mark and Board of Trade. So that was really cool. To, thank you. Yeah, it was it was a shock to me. I'm like, oh no, like I I'm not gonna get that. You know, like <laughs> you know, I don't contribute enough. I think you know, I'm still in baby, right? Baby business. But when we got it, I was like, that's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> that was really really nice. That's yeah. really great. So looking ahead, yeah, uh, 2024. Any big plans? Like, what's next for the singing school? I think I'm just gonna keep challenging the boundaries. Right. You know, we're doing things like this year, yeah. uh, and actually next week, we're we have a concert with the orchestra, and that's right. very extremely cool to have elementary school students sing together with a full orchestra. Just letting them experience what it's like to collaborate with professional musicians. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it was possible, but here it is. We're, it's possible. And next year, we're going to be putting on a musical, Finding Nemo. Some of the kids are super excited about that already. Wow. We're going to see how we can bring in some you know, set builders and, and, and things like that, and maybe even get a community uh, band to play the live music, but we don't know yet. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot of things that like it's constantly pushing, like what can we do with the school? What can we make every performance inspired? Okay. So what if we want to keep up to date in terms of your latest offerings, like latest programs, like promotion or events like this? Mm. What's the best way to get in touch? Yeah, you can visit us at thesingingschool.net. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very, very, I love that net because of the whole pandemic we were <laughs> online. Um, and then we're also on Instagram. At okay. the singing school. Cool, awesome. Yeah. And we will put the information in the description and you can follow. And I really want to thank you for thank you. sitting down with us today to talk about your vision, talk about your business. Really appreciate your time. I know you're extremely busy, uh, mm -hmm. but you still take time to speak with us. Thank you. I look forward to, to seeing this interview on my channel. So, bye.